Glamour. Grit. Glamour. Grit. Welcome back to the Glamour and Grit. Here we go. Friday. Friday, baby. Friday, Friday, Friday. Had an awesome Monday with Ms. Leanne Morgan. I am still shooketh that she came on our show. Like, I, I, in my bones, it's, I, I still can't believe it. You know there's, like, celebrities that can, like, put a hat on, put some glasses on, grow out a beard, and, like, be able to do what they want to do. That woman opens her mouth and there's no hiding. No, she she's has a the star. greatest, most iconic, just character, voice, accent of all time. I'm in love with that woman. I'm in love. And she's just that type you just want to like crawl up into her bosom and just like lay your head down. She's so like motherly and nurturing. I think that's why everybody loves her so much. She just oh, like she ended, makes you feel at home. Yeah. She was like, oh, let me just, if I was there, I'd come and like bake you cookies and tuck you in bed. I'm like, you're genuinely like this. No, too. she's the most special human being on the earth. She's Earth's. a star. I'm, and thanks for listening, guys. Yeah, thanks for coming back. It thanks means for a lot. Back. We got an awesome guest, uh, a good friend of mine coming up on Monday. Can't give anything away, but he's a superstar. Yeah, he is a superstar. He is a singer, songwriter, country sensation. And my other doll baby. Like, I adore oh, him. I, that's all I can give. But if you like country music, if even if you don't like country music, but if you don't, get on it because it's the top of the top. Uh, but he is on top of the charts, so I'm very excited for it. It's not Tim McGraw. I think people expect Tim McGraw, too. It's not my buddy Tim. Timmy. He will be coming. We're working on Timmy. He's, he's in the works. But uh, anyway... Oh my God, I'm so excited. We had a busy week. It was our daughter's fifth birthday and our son's third birthday. Yeah. So if y'all don't know, Eric and I like to mm -hmm on New Year's. So both of our babies were conceived on New Year's. Well, it's the so, only time we can get pregnant, apparently. I guess so. No, we got very blessed with that. But we literally, Molly Morgan's due date, September 27th, is Mick's actual birthday. So Momo was four days late. So she was October 1st. So it's always like a very busy two weeks. Oh, I mean, it was insane, but I'm I'm glad because I'm back. I got to be here. I was away in Montana for um, a while. Um, I got to sneak back in for 24 hours for uh, Momo's birthday party, and then I came back, and I, now here we are. And I feel like we're still celebrating. We still have Mick's birthday party coming, coming up. up. But I need to say something. Sure. I need to talk to the people out there. I apologize. I am... A Swifty now. Oh. Oh, I get it. Our daughter wanted to have her birthday. Oh. The five-year-old era. And if you have listened to this show. It's big news. You, not that I didn't like Taylor Swift. I loved You didn't. It. No. It's just I You didn't, weren't a fan. I wasn't like overly passionate about it. Like I just didn't really, she didn't phase me or like she just wasn't a part of you my. You didn't understand her. You I weren't didn't a fan. get like the obsession I it's okay it. to say you weren't, because now you are. I am. I wow. get it. Watching those, we had a Taylor Swift impersonator at the party, and watching those little girls sing and watch, quote unquote, Taylor Swift, was one of the biggest, greatest highlights of my entire life. It was unbelievable. They knew every word. They knew all the dances. It was really, really cool. But the crazy part is we're talking five-year-old girls. Literally. 50-year-old girls are doing the same thing with Taylor Swift. But I think, and so are 25-year-old girls. I think what she brings is just happy. It's this, like, euphoria of happiness and togetherness. I get it. I apologize to the Swifties. I was wrong. I didn't. I had never seen it firsthand. And I saw it firsthand. And I apologize. And it was amazing. And we have had multiple people, fathers, uncles, grandparents, you name it, say, hey, we got to see her in concert. And all jokes aside, go to this concert because it's life changing. Well, and Molly Morgan and I watched it because it's available on Disney Plus. It's phenomenal. I mean, it's, it's I amazing. feel like we missed our mark. I think she has two cities left in the world right now that she's doing. It's her final two cities. So I don't know if we'll make it. But man, <sighs> the next era's tour. We are there front row. We're going to be there. Well, and Momo got her ears pierced. Oh, yeah. So she, she is a girl of the piercing. She's five. Got her pierced. 
how old were you when you got yours pierced? 13. How old um, was your grandma when she got hers pierced? Never. <laughs> your grandma has never gotten her ears pierced. Sissy is pierceless. But it's funny because that generation either didn't do it or it's not uncommon from what I hear to have never gotten your ears pierced no. from that generation. And like Big Dad, my grandfather, I think he would croak over. And then your mom, if, her generation, probably were like, what? Probably 16. 16? Yeah, I would really? think. I mean, I was 13. I know, but I felt like our generation was like the last of the, you wait until middle school, high school. Right, so my mom would be Would have been older. 16. Okay, yeah. That's older. High school. Yeah. Okay, okay, yeah. And then you were like middle school. Yeah. And now we're going full elementary. No, Now they go like babies. It's crazy, but I'm for it. Like, I well, see Andy, nothing wrong. No. Back in the day, it was like, oh, you know, they're not old enough. It's too mature, blah, blah, blah. I think it's adorable. I think it's so cute. I and have nothing against she, it. She she wanted it. So I know you like can't get your, like your kids everything that they want, but she really, really wanted that. I think it was like such a big moment for her to feel five. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It wasn't like we were like, hey, you're five you're now. You're getting your ears pierced. You got to get your ears pierced. She did it. And I kept thinking, you kept thinking too. I know you did. That we'd get there and she'd back out because she was nervous. I mean, yeah. these are needles going in your ears. And she understands because she's watched Parent Trap with me 1,500 times that it's a needle. It goes in your ear. You scream. And that's how it goes down. But she was brave. She sat in that chair. We had all of our family with us. Your grandparents, your parents, my mom. I mean, it was it was a full her ordeal. Her cousin. Her cousin. Uh, and she sat there. She took it. She said, Ow. Held about three seconds and then jet out of the chair into my arms and cried for probably 15 minutes. But we got it done. We got it done. And then she ran into her boyfriend at lunch. Yep. And let me tell y'all, she was feeling those earrings then. She got a little dose of that confidence. And she was a flirting machine. That's the first time I've seen my daughter full <laughs> on flirting, giddy, giddy bubbly giddy like that feeling like when you see your crush and like you're obviously not going to touch their hand because you're not there yet at, at that stage in life but you're like just looking in each other's like, eyes tickled. make you happy i saw that and i was touched and like happy for her and also like terrified all at the same time i know because it's, it's so wild and just watching them play together like it was oh it made my heart so full but i'm like oh we're here no i know we're and at she that thinks phase. about boys Oh, my She's land five. Time. No, and I think just having, like, crushes and best friends, like, it's just all the feels. Like, she's starting to feel all the feels, which is really cool. She is. And this it's was funny. To navigate. Yeah, this was funny, though, because Mick, who is just turned three, and, and this boy, her, her I'm going to call him her friend. Uh, I don't know if she thinks of it as more than a friend, but I'm saying A boy friend, in her class. A boy in her class that's her friend is two years older than Mick. They they were playing. They were doing some rough housing. They were playing tackle the person with the football on the trampoline. It was hilarious because Mick finally got a boy to, like, be rough with. And this boy was giving it. Mick was giving it. Molly Morgan, I just, I remember at one point her, like, being torn as to, like, am I supposed to defend my friend or am I supposed to defend Mick? Because there were times where she was like, oh, careful, Mick, don't do that. And then there were times where it was like, hey, that was Mick's toy. That's my brother. So like seeing that, like that push and pull and that like, oh, I'm torn because I really like this boy. But like my loyalty is That's my to blood. my brother. It was really kind of cute. Well, and I love Janie, who is two years old. We call them the twins, Mick and Janie. Janie. Yan our Janie girl. She said, F you, Mick. I am going to my boyfriend. Oh, I think she yeah. thought that was her boyfriend, too. Yeah. She was like, goodbye, Mick. Sorry. Anytime that Molly Morgan's little boy from her class would fall down or anything, Janie would come running to his rescue. Not just running, but, like, Mick would come running, too, to, like, help him. She's like, no, Mick. Be nice, Mick. My friend. <laughs> Be nice, Mick. And then she even wanted her hair down, like, her pigtails down to look like a big girl. Oh, it was Kids so Kids are cute. so freaking funny. I can't even take it. It was hilarious. It's all I do is I think talk about the funny things. If you haven't looked at my Instagram video of Mick, you need to. With the fat filter? Oh my, that entire video is the funniest freaking thing. His comedic <laughs> timing. But I'm not going to play the whole thing. But our kids got, well, really our kids didn't. Molly Morgan got her first voiceover audition. 
<laughs> she did. Oh my God. She did. And the mom and me is dying. Well, I go into the kitchen. And I'm like, Molly Morgan, do you want to do what mommy does? Do you want to come audition, like be on the microphone? Well, first, before that, they would, I remember when, when we had the kids, they asked Sadie at one point, her agents, and she was like the top dogs of voiceovers. And they were like, hey, would you ever, if roles come up for children, which sometimes they do, and they actually want children to play them, would you be open to or interested in having your kid ever audition? And of course, we were both like, yes, sign her up. Yeah. Like something we Can't love, wait. like absolutely. And it came. And it, there was always kind of a point you either have like baby babies they want to hear, but they try to avoid kind of the one to four year old age because they just, you never know. They're unpredictable. Yeah. Well, no. now and you Molly, get adults that can do like, gah, 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 gah. like yeah. they, adults can do that. So you might as well use adults. But that was pretty good. You're like a star. Did I just bust out a Goo Goo Gaga, Gaga on cue? Well, of course, I walk into the kitchen. Molly Morgan had just gotten home from school. And I'm like, do you want to get on the microphone? And she's like, no. And Mick goes, I do. And I, of course, my my little Mick man. So I was like, okay, Mick, why we can't not? play a single second of it. I'm playing just their- Non-disclosure. Their, we no, can't do I'm it. No, I'm playing their, their slaves. Oh, okay. Oh, don't. You think I've been in this business long enough? I, I know what I'm doing. I just didn't want to get you canceled here. Oh, no. So, here is Mick's slate. Let me make sure I turn my phone up. And your slate is just where you get your... Oh, sorry. You ready? Hi, I'm Mick Nelson. I'm two years old. <laughs> I mean, die. Well, then we played... Start them young, folks. No. <laughs> Start them young. I, I'm Mick Nelson. Then Momo... So I, we came back, I edited his whole audition, I come back and I play it for your mom and Molly Morgan. Which my mom lives for performing arts and oh. like it is her life. She loves to see her kids do it. And so for her to have seen and heard her grandpa, I can just imagine her in her room right now, like just playing it on loop. Over and over, over and, and over. like I've been doing every second. Well, then Momo saw like your mom and I's reaction to Mick's audition. And she goes, oh no, no, little brother. I'm going to one-up your game. Nope. So, it was Momo's turn. Hi, I'm Molly Morgan. I turned five yesterday. Star. <laughs> Star. <laughs> and she literally loved it. They I will be so happy because th th this is the best part. So, they asked the kids to audition. Sainty also was asked to audition. And they didn't they even ask Mick to audition. Mick just auditioned. Oh, we, yeah. We just volunteered Mick. So yeah. Yeah. And then they asked Sainty to audition, and now they asked me to audition, which I did, and Sainty helped me with it. But I can't wait for all of us to audition for this, and it's like our kid that gets it, which is going to happen. I already, literally, I have already put that in my mind. I'm like, I, I know the, the casting and the director, and I already know she's going to call me being like, um, so I will have you good be? News will and, you be wait, like, I have good news and bad news. Good news and bad news. <laughs> good news. Molly Morgan booked it. Bad news, you did that. You still need to find a job. Wait, <laughs> do you know what, though? This is literally what happened to me and you when Sissy and Big Dad booked the movie no, I know. with J-Lo. Are, are, are you going to be... Are you? Because you want this show. This is going to be an epic, huge television yeah. show. You want this job. When your daughter books it over you, <laughs> will there be some jealousy, animosity, or just 100% like, this is amazing? Are you like, kind of going to be like, wow, I really wish I could have done that too. No, of course not. Are you not. sure? No, because I, I literally, I I will be doing it. I'm calling I, bluff here. I'm going to no, be like, oh, I'm so excited for you. God damn, I wanted to jump so bad. No, because I will be having to do it with her. I know. So I will be doing the job. That will make our life. I'm just being crazy. But like that, I can't wait for that call. I, and I think Molly Morgan is the type and I feel as though, and we've talked about it, voiceover is the perfect introduction to our industry. Not only is it a perfect, well, it depends because the perfect introduction for a kid that loves to be the center of attention is on stage in front of 2,000 people. Yeah. But Molly Morgan is an introvert. She does not like big crowds. She wants to sit back, let everybody else do it, and maybe she'll warm up to it. So for someone who actually does love to sing and dance and perform at home when there's not a crowd, this is the perfect outlet for her type of personality. Da and we've always said that, too, because you're very like this. Like, you you aren't super, super outgoing in big crowds. But on, like, behind the camera, you are, you light up. It's oh, amazing. Uh, and 
put me on a stage and I feel like I'm at home. But when it comes to just social settings, you're right. Yeah. It's weird how like what gets me going. But I think that's a lot of actors is you meet these actors and you expect them to be these like big personalities or even like our sweet Claudia Oshway. She's such a calm, kind human being. And you expect her, I think, to be this big personality in real life. And not kind? <laughs> no, no, no. Like, just a big, big personality. I know, and I like know. a comedian. she's such a presence. She's such a presence on her on show. The toast. Yeah. And but then, then you, you just meet her, her and she's so, like, the running joke on the toast is she never lets Jackie talk. And that's so not her in real life. I know. It's a, it's a you know, a persona. You tap into it. And, and yeah. I don't even think it's a persona. I think. A lot of people, that side of you feel comfortable when it's not like the entire world looking at you. Agreed. Agreed. I would never sit down and have a one hour conversation on a park bench typically with anybody. But I could sit in this room and talk and have things to say off the cuff of my cuff of my sleeve all day long because I know there's cameras and micros, microphones rolling. No, I know. It's crazy. That is really and. Whereas actually, most people, would the cameras are rolling and the microphones are on, that's when they crumble, when they're really actually outgoing and talking yeah. in real life. Just just a different side. I well, don't know. and I think that's where I struggle too, especially with the celebrity episodes. I do more comfortable with when we're interviewing people that aren't necessarily like me. So like our guest coming up on Monday, I felt super, super comfortable because he's more of a your personality type. Yep who we just interviewed the other day, I was tripping over my words. I was freaking out. Yeah, yeah, I, I was, noticed. And I, I, I will say, I was so nervous. I, I just, I think because I listened. An to, upcoming episode that we has, haven't released. Yes. I might have to do some tweaks on that episode because I was just tickled. I, I really had fangirled over this person. And when you listen to somebody every single day, and that's a part of your life every single day, that's what I was thinking of. I'm sorry, when I was driving. And I think of this when it comes to Taylor Swift, when it comes to anybody who we interviewed, I listen to her every single day, all day long on her podcast. I, I'm obsessed with her. And then you meet them. And it's so weird to think somebody is so a part of your life and they have no idea who you are. Yeah, every television show ever. I know, but isn't that such a strange concept to think about? Not really, because that just, yeah. But I think it, if you really industry. think about it, though, it's, it's weird. like you can be such a monumental presence in somebody's life and they don't even know you exist. Right. And that's the annoying part that actors struggle with, uh, like juggling, is that when they meet you, they expect the character. They expect the person that they know so well on this show and they meet you. And oftentimes they're either let down or they're like, well, why didn't you at least play along with your yeah. character or, you know, so... It's it is that weird balance, balance of like they're expecting somebody you are definitely not. And well, they so, always say never meet your idols. Yeah, a lot of the time. But then I meet like Lionel Richie, and he's everything and more that I want him to be. Yeah, Lee and Morgan, everything and more. You have those people. I think what's what I think the specific is and the difference is people that are on long running television series. That's the difference because. Those are characters they've lived in for years, and the, the audience has grown with them. They've yes. been watching We've, them. Our lives have changed. You've had children with these people yeah. in your mind. Musicians, they're doing their own thing. Movie stars, every movie, they're a different character. Yeah. But those long-running television series, that's when it's tricky because they really think they know who you are because they know your character. And then they meet you, and they're like, you don't talk with an accent. You don't have this. You're not actually in love with that girl. You're da 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 You wonder if that's why we don't do long-running series anymore. Like, it really is usually now, like, a three to six season. Because that's we're it. protecting your social outings, folks. No, no but I wonder. Not... No, no, no. But I wonder if an audience starts to just not believe that. If you watch something short enough, you you really think you're attracted to that character. You are a part of that character. But then after long enough, you're like, well, I know you're not actually that. So I wonder if the audience doesn't believe it as much anymore. Because we know most of these people online. Back then, we didn't have any access to them. Hey, there could be something there. You know, it's really interesting. And obviously, probably our, how long we can keep attention like our attention span to things is well yeah super no, if low. It's, yeah if it's not immediate then we're just moving on that's why i don't watch television series i like give me a good documentary give me a good limited docu-series yeah i'm all about docus or 
maybe a four, five, six episode miniseries that's been released all at once. Otherwise, I'm out. I don't have the attention span. I can't wait. And I'm just not interested. It's yeah. so weird. I just finished uh, The Good Couple or The Perfect Couple with Nicole Kenman. It was in Levi Shriver. Shriver. Is it Levi? Oh, Lee Schreiber. Lee Schreiber. One, he's freaking phenomenal. Well, yeah, he's, he's so freaking talented. But Dakota Fanning was in it. And it was so interesting because I grew up with Dakota Fanning. Is like how to make that transition as an adult actress. Like if I would just see her as that little girl. And I got to admit the first episode, I was like, eh, that's, that's Dakota Fanning. That's that little girl. And then by the end, I was so impressed by her. Oh, she's amazing. I she's mean, amazing. But do you know what I mean? It's kind of always watching this young actor, been this young actor, that's what she was famous for, now transitioning. She was pregnant on the show. So it's like, am I believing that she's pregnant? Well, yeah, she's old enough to be pregnant. Oh, yeah. I it, wonder how old she I think she's like 28, 29. No, you think? I would uh, think she's like 25. Yeah, maybe 25. Dakota Fanning. 25. Dakota. Um, but we got some We got some juice. We got some juice. We got to, oh, we really got to talk about some couple things going on in the world. Jack right to my baby. So she was born in 1994. What would that make her? Oh, she's, yeah. She's older than She's like 30. She's older than Matt, yeah. Wow. Yep. yep. Girl, you, you have, you're, you're an adult. She is. She is, and she's a very talented one. Um, our port is on strike right now. What is our port? Oh, like where the whole we get our east things. coast of the United States of America, uh, the the shipments that come in on the big shipping containers from overseas, where we get all of our like goods Everything? and manufacturing goods and all of that sort of stuff, they're on strike, which means nothing's coming in, which means everyone's in a panic right now. But the funniest part is there's only one funny part, and it's people. <laughs> went to Costco and bought every roll of toilet paper. There's videos online. Like everyone freaked out. They bought all the toilet paper because they're like, Oh, it's like a COVID moment again. Toilet paper's made in the United States. That's not coming in on the ship. So they all panicked, bought all the toilet paper. <laughs> Wait, and toilet paper? Like, if you don't have toilet paper, you can do it old school and, like, do a cloth and do but it the in the But the funny part machine. is, like, they all went and bought toilet paper, and that's the one thing that, like, we don't need the ships for. No, so. and, like... Yeah, like let's do canned food. But no, thousands of dock workers are 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 completely on strike right now. They're the ones that are loading and unloading cargo ships. This happened on Tuesday, and all the way from Maine down to Texas is is uh, is just holding cargo stranded. Like nothing is coming in, nothing is going out. It's cons it is consumer goods, manufacturing parts. Um, you know, everything from food that comes over, Wait. pharmaceuticals, pills are coming over yeah, from Europe. And I was about to say, will this be, I wonder if we'll get like another outbreak of salmonella and all these things that are sitting in cargos that they actually end up selling to us? I don't Do know. Do you know what I, I mean? mean? Like, I wonder if we're going to start getting like a lot of food poisoning and different things if things are just like sitting in bed. Oh no, if it's here and it made it to shore, they'll, you know, it's here, but nothing, nothing new is coming. It's like whatever we have right now is what we've got. Well, right what now. about those poor people that were like already almost here? Yeah. Like, do they just turn around or did they, they just, just take it there and put it on the dock? Uh, you know what they probably did? They probably pulled their boat up and that was it. They just left it. So if other people want to go and get the goods that are maybe just sitting on shore somewhere, you can. But uh, it's crazy because what I read for The New York Times is that it costs us five billion dollars a day in goods is what is is what. Yeah. Um, so just like it give... costs the economy five billion dollars a day. And here's the kicker. So it's a new contract that's up, uh -huh. a six year contract. They're right now they're making thirty nine dollars an hour and they're asking for a five dollar an hour raise in each year of the six year contract. That's it. It seems pretty black and so white. Five dollars a year, like mm. additional or like within five. So a dollar every year. Five dollar. $5 an hour raise in each year of the six-year contract. So 39, let's just call it 40. The next year will be 45, 50, 55. So it is a big climb. Big time. Big climb. That's a that's a hearty ass. Yeah, but it says if there was one industry that could ask for whatever they want yeah. right now, it's it's goods and services. I just feel like that might make things a little bit more complicated. So what if you come in year two of that? So do you get paid, what is it? $45 or do you start at $39? I don't know. Do you know if, what I mean? If, I feel like that's way more caught. Like just ask for a $30 raise. But that's what it's about. You know, they yeah. just want a little more money, not a lot, but a little more money to be, 
I guess, feeling like they're treated fairly. But I can see, and I'm probably going to get in so much trouble, like, that makes it seem way more, a lot more by saying $5 every year instead of just being like, hey, we want a, like, $20 raise. Yeah. Like, just ask for that or just ask for a $30 raise. And maybe that will be the counter. Like, eh, we're not going to escalate it over the years. I don't know why, but the escalation to me sounds so much more daunting than just, like, asking for, like, we want this as the raise. Well, maybe because 20 more for every person up front is a lot of a lump sum all at once. But, you know, if you build up to that 20, it maybe makes more sense. I don't know. We're going to see. But imagine. No cars being sold coming across these. No wow. bananas, apparel, footwear, accessories, manufacturing parts being seized. However, the West Coast is still open, but it's going to back up very quickly. They're saying people aren't going to feel the effects of it for a yeah. little bit because of how much stuff we already have circulating. But if it lasts long, it will be detrimental to the United States of America. So we'll see. Hopefully they... But everyone else is panicking and buying toilet paper. Well, maybe this is a great opportunity for us to do some more things in-house. I mean. And get creative. <laughs> it's definitely an opportunity. Just but, call uh, me. You have an idea? Yeah. Like, um, you know, it's like if we need those goods, well, let's start making those goods here, too. Wonderful, baby. Let's cook it up. I know. But I'm all about, I mean, oh, the world is one. I, I mean, at least we're all in this one world. So it's like, let's all help each other. Listen, Bob Marley, preach. Come on. I know. Come one on. world, one life. And that what? let's nope. get together. Let's get together and it'll be all right. It's definitely it. Right. But the, the first part, that, that I don't know what Wasn't that was. That, what was the song where they all did? It was like Michael Jackson and it was all those famous people back in the day. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's not Bob Marley. I know, but what was that song? Oh, like... Um, Heal the world. You are the world or... It's a, you are the world. Isn't that it? Yep. We are its children. But. The end. Thank you. Thank You're you. You're welcome. Applause. Yeah, no, it's crazy. So we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Uh, the port the port strike is massive. Uh, but I don't think it's going to be very long. Did you see? <laughs> Did you see? Because we talked about this last week. You know, our astronauts that have been stuck in space since June. Suppose, are they coming down? Good news. Elon Musk, SpaceX, got the aircraft to the International Space Station. They're up there. Right, but, like, can we get them back? But the bad news is now two more astronauts are stuck in space because that ship had problems, and now none of them are coming back. You're really kidding. <laughs> I can't make it up. No, they're like, we brought you two friends. They did. They came on a spaceship with two empty seats, like, ready to go. They get there, and apparently, what did I write down? It's like... The, uh, the landing thing was off. And so they're like, oh, we can't risk this. It, like, didn't land on spot where it was supposed to. And so they're like, no, we can't. We can't do it. So now they're up there. Well, at least they have friends. Yeah, but why wouldn't they just turn right back around? Because they got there. The ship is not suitable oh, like to make it all the way back. back in the United States. Yes. Well, it had issues at landing at the International Space Station. Yeah. So they're like, well, we're not going to chance it missing landing. on Like, it, they're just, they can't risk it. So now we got, they made it. Everyone was cheering. Like, oh we gosh. did it. We did it. And they're like, actually, no, now they're stuck there till February. Okay. Another might be dumb question. Can they just call NASA? NASA like, wants nothing to do with it. See, this is why we can't make enemies, y'all. It's, it's Elon Musk keep, keeps winning the bid to like be the one to do it. Cause I don't think NASA's, I don't, I, I, I don't think they're into this at all. But isn't this like a humanity issue? Don't we like need to get them because like, they're human? Yeah. Stuck in space? Yeah. Like, don't we use government resources? And is NASA's funded by government? Like, Yeah, but I think it was, that? remember, it was all defunded, and it was like, had all these issues. And that's when Elon and, and um, you know, Jeff Bezos, they all came in with their rockets. And they're like, well, if NASA can't do it anymore, we'll do it. So they're holding true to their word and being like, we want to be the ones to pioneer this. They're all fighting for it, but Elon's the one that keeps winning it, even though his rockets keep failing. Uh, but these, this rocket did get them there. But now they're stuck there and nobody's going to touch them until February when NASA, I believe, is the one to go and do it. Or I maybe it's Elon again. I'm so confused, but I know they're stuck there till February. We are like hitting our tables and our chairs today. This is both a passionate, passionate, hot topic. We got people floating in space by themselves. OK, I have a question. Yes. Would you rather be those two that try to save them and then you're like the heroes that went and saved them? 
or would you rather and risk like have that risk of being stuck up there or would you rather not be a hero at all what like those like would i would i want to go to space or anything would you rather take the risk and maybe be a hero or you can maybe die or not make it back listen i take a or risk or not try at all i like taking risks and being the hero to my children I'm very content with that. I was just about to say that. I think like back in the day, if we didn't have kids, I'd be like, let's, let's roll. Yeah. I, if it, if, if it comes to like a thing that could like possibly blow me up or I could get stuck somewhere and not really like, I, I'm okay with going away for work, but that's because I'm getting paid to do it. And I know I'm coming right back yeah. and there's nothing going to get in the way of that really in theory. But to willingly go to outer space, to be the hero, knowing that I could get stuck there and my kids are back here. I am the hero every morning I wake up and make my kids breakfast. That, to me, is a win. I know. But it's always interesting, like, those people that go, that don't know people, but that, like, go inside a burning building. Or... Uh, the amount of respect. And honestly, if it's a, if it's a situation like that, yeah. where it's like, there's no time to think. You Someone's in there. I know I can save them. Hell yeah, I'm gonna get in there. Yeah. Like there's there's I just know the into like the instinct in me. One agreed. I see someone in a window, I'm running in that window and I'm getting them. Space thing's a little different. No, but it really is really interesting because Raya and I, she her father passed away and she was in a support group, a young people support group, and it's called like the Your friend Raya. Yes. And there was a sister of a person that was a freak accident they were a part. I'm not going to go into details of, like, the accident. But it was interesting. You can watch the video and how many people just, like, stood there. Oh, baby. It's, it's, it's such it's, an interesting, because we really don't know what we would do in a freak, like, in, like, even if that, like, a burning building, we all say we would go in. But then do you go in? It's so interesting what we do in, like, flight or fight moments. What 100%. our minds Hundred percent. Put ourselves through. Yeah, no, it is crazy, and it's. Just, I mean, it's the old Bible story. The guy, guy's sitting on the side of the road, and no one stops to help him, and he ends up. Be, I mean, you know, yeah, you you always help your neighbor. You know, you you've got to think about. I mean, most of the time you have no time to think, but it's like your instinct should be to help other people. Totally. Um, but it is very interesting because I'm scared of flying. I don't love to fly, and I was in a plane accident when Eric and I first started dating, and we were going down, the The mask came on. And my first instinct, this is somebody that's like deathly scared of flying, was to take pictures and to send Eric. Yeah. So then I am full panic on land. Like I'm getting pictures of her in a mask and now I'm not hearing from her. And I call her mom in tears, like I'm just full panic. But you think in that moment, like I, in my mind, I was like, I need to send him pictures so they know who is on this plane. If there's like a hint of something, I think it it's so sad, but you go back, especially our age group, to 9-11, I'm like, if there was a bomb on the plane, if there's something, I just was like, I have to document what is happening inside this plane to send to Eric if something happens. And that's what you did. But isn't that I... weird, though? As somebody who's, you think, like, deathly scared, I would be, I was weirdly calm. I was like, oh, I, I just went into... Like investigation mode. Yeah. No phone call. No like audio text or something. No. And Eric and I always, I, in super small, small, not important circumstances, I freak out. Huge stuff. I am like weirdly calm. Yeah. It is crazy. It's crazy how that works. Yeah. Like you would think I can handle a lot when it's like super, super, super bad. Give me something super tiny. I lose my, my shit. Yeah. I, I, it, yeah, it's, it's, that's just some, you know, everybody's got their own thing. I've, you know, my, <laughs> I've, you know, I've seen someone, um, choking on something and everyone ran out of the room and I'm like, well, I guess I'll be the one to save you. <laughs> like people, like they, they just handle panic differently. No, I'll never, my little brother was having a seizure and my mom just like went running. And my, and, yeah, I was like on Halloween the other year, like was it Molly Morgan or Mick? One of them was choking on it. So I, Grabbed her, flipped her upside down, and started smacking the hell out of her back, and it came out. Yeah. But everyone else just kind of stared. I don't know. It's like sometimes you're in those modes. Um, but you I mean, want me I, to go or you to go? What? You want me to go? Sure. Do you know that Hoda is leaving the Today Show and NBC? 
Oh, man. How long? She had a long run. Oh, my God. Um, She was after she, she was on the Today Show alone for 17 years. Wow. So she's just going to kick back and, and retire or? Well, she has two young girls that she adopted. And so I think she just wants to be there fully. She was like, I feel like I'm missing that time. But I just feel like that's such the end of. Yeah, a, I mean, it was crazy when wasn't that the one Matt Lauer was on too? Yes, Didn't he had that just, huge scandal. Oh my god, I actually did forget about that freaking psycho. But just think that reminds me of Willis, like Fortune, all these like things that we've watched our entire lives and yeah. upbringing. When they start to retire, it's like when Vanna when White Roker retires, goes, th that's when you know. Yes. Yeah. I'm like that's so weird because you just kind of think that they'll never leave. Like, they'll, nothing will ever happen to them. They'll never retire. Yep. They'll just always be on your TV. That's much how they must have felt with, was it Jimmy? Who were the old-time late-night hosts? Oh, my gosh. All of them. Yeah. I mean, from Carson to, you know, Letterman to... D just imagining them retiring is so strange. I know. That's how I feel when I see my childhood, like, you know, when I started seeing my childhood quarterbacks in the NFL, like, disappear, like... Brett Favre and then Peyton Manning. And or like now that the Manning son is yes. playing for college. It's so wild. It's so wild. Um, oh, that's oh, good for her. She I know. I'm really happy run. for her. But I, I will she miss gets a her. Star. She needs a star on the walk. I would of think fame. she has one. I think she's had one for a long time. Oh, okay. I would definitely. If think. not, let's campaign for that. Yeah, but I, I think that was probably decades ago with her and um, Kathy. Oh, okay. I would think they probably got it together. Man, that's cool. Good for her. Happy I know. That. that has to be so weird, though. Like, I always wonder, like, my dad, too. He's worked every day of his life. He says he'll never retire. He, and then he will never retire. But making that decision, being like, okay. And then you got to get home and you're like, what do I do with but myself? I know. I want, you know, but people who are that in the limelight and who have just lived that life for so long, they're like, oh, I'll retire, you know. Or like an NFL star, I'll retire, and then they're the commentator. Or then they're, yeah, and you know, I know she'll be like writing books. Oh, she'll yeah. She'll be doing. So yeah. it's kind of hard too, especially. I wish I was that type. I was thinking about this earlier, about a stay-at-home parent. I feel like that is kind of becoming. Whoa, is that one of your cards? No. Non-existent. It, you very rarely see. It's a privilege to be a stay-at-home parent, but then you have this coin toss of people feeling like if you have the privilege to be a stay-at-home parent, it's, is that enough? But I, too? It's but such I, an interesting way. Like, I wish I could be that kind of personality. I can't. I have to work. I'm obsessed with working. But it's also it, like, with inflation the way it is and everything, like, people can't afford to well, that's, yeah, of it's course, so back too. Back then, you could easier because it's like you weren't living in the means that we have to live at these days. Totally. It's almost impossible. I mean, unless you are really, really either, A, you know, scaling back your means and, like, really living check to check or, like, have such a successful, you know, spouse that it's like, wow, what a blessing. But there's no middle ground anymore. Like, you yeah. literally, it's either one or the other just because of how expensive everything is and inflation and everything else. It's just nuts. I know. You can't afford it. No, it's really true. And I just, I know somebody that they were like, I, I just want to be at home. And like, I just have that guilt of just wanting to be at home. I do too. But isn't this so, but I, I would love that. Really? Oh, to like, um, I don't know. I say that because I have so much fun with the kids and I'm like, man, but it is so much work, but it's like, I don't know. No, I probably wouldn't. I because there's so much in me that I still need to like have fulfilled. But like the the idea of it for a bit does sound great. But then I feel like maybe you'll get a taste and be like, ooh, or someone you know might get a taste and be like, I'm missing something. Yeah. I need. I don't know. It's interesting. I don't know. I, I and I. This is maybe like a super super hot topic. There's something about jobs, whether a stay at home parent or that we just have lost sight of that is so important too. Like people can't just be a regular job anymore. It seems like people just have to strive and strive and strive or you can't just have that. You got to have a be viral on TikTok or just, it seems like the content, we've lost sense of contentment. Oh yeah, of course. And simplicity. Simplicity. It's that's so what it is. It is and so I might gone. be like canceled or whatever for saying that. No, but it, that's... I, I'm, I'm so envious 
I and I don't know if I my brain was wired this way as a kid, like I was just born this way, with the act of simplicity. I I would love 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 to er, like learn just every day in life. The but act us of simplicity. As a society is not simplistic anymore. Yeah, there's no simplicity. There is, you know, we all know like that. That's just not the day and age that we live in right now. Not to say can't go back there yeah. one day, but. But even, like, sitting at a table for an hour without, like, anything. Like, not even computers, food, just, like, sitting and talking for an hour. Innocence, simplicity. That would be so, I couldn't do it. Like, it's just, it's gone. Like, it is gone. You really, really, really have to feel every second. And if you're not feeling every second, you're not feeling like you're doing enough. And then you think you're doing too much, so then you try to scale it back, but then it's like you feel like you're falling behind again and everyone else around you is moving fast. And so it's like you either jump in the stream and the current and swim with the rest of the fish or you're kind of off over here. You know, it's like, how do you balance? I know, it's so weird. I was just thinking that earlier. Oh, I'm getting, a, I'm getting, oh, this is giving me anxiety. I know, but, that, really, we, but I really do feel like we've lost the art of simplicity. Yeah, but you know what? Maybe there are ways to, to it, if, if, if you do feel like there's someone out there that is, you know, I don't know. Maybe there's a cool, there's a cool opportunity there to bring simplistic simplicity through different avenues and veins back into society. And does that take shape in certain types of businesses or certain, you know, but it look, might take our, work to get there. But I was about to say, that's literally us building a career about <laughs> acts of simplicity. That is how both of our brains are wired. We're like, how can we... Um, what is it? Monetize this. But I'll do the work so the other people can figure out how to be simplistic. You yeah, know? but is it that is so art? That is exactly why what I'm saying. It's so yeah. bizarre. Both of our minds are like monetizing this. So what how do, do we, we do? figure? Yes, out? it's like can you, no, just like I really I I do want to give everybody a challenge and ask a challenge. Let's try at some point, whether it be at like a table or outside, like not playing, not watching anything. Just to sit and talk. That for an was hour. called COVID. And unless there's a pandemic, it ain't gonna happen again. I know, but isn't that so crazy? I know. It was beautiful. There were beautiful moments throughout. Like there were some real silver linings, and that was one of them. Um, I just gotta Very bring it up because we're just like this dude, this dude, I can't, I can't deal with it anymore. Diddy. What a, the heck? One hundred and twenty devil. 120 new sexual assault lawsuits. And how 25 many are underage? of them are underage. Yeah. 25. One of them, one of the accusers, nine-year-old at the alleged uh, incident. No, that truly is. I, th that, that is a devil. I mean, that, that is just a, a devil. That is and a I know, sick, disgusting, and anybody around that person that helped facilitate that or even had an inkling or defense or anything like LeBron James the other day was interviewed and asked, but he's like, well, I can't, I'm not going to say a word until things are proven in justice or something like that. I'm like, LeBron, bro, what kind of comment is that? No. And especially if it's this many, it's like, Oh, I if mean, you are a, a dear thousand bottles of baby oil for what he called his freak off supplies. Oh, it's disgusting. And he's like, Oh, well, well, you know, I buy things in bulk. I have a Costco down the street. Costco said, we don't sell baby oil. So, yeah. you know, what is going on, bro? And I mean, up to this point, and a lot of people now are trying to get money and stuff, but 3,000 individuals have come forward with accusations against Diddy, which he's already been <gasps> charged. He's in, um, he's in Brooklyn right now, uh, currently detained. But that would make sense. Just think if he did a party or something, that's a hundred people either but, working or like, so I can definitely see why, how 3000 adds up. Very absolutely. Fast. And your sex trafficking. So he was charged with sex trafficking, racketeering, mm. transportation of engaged in prostitution. I mean, it, it, it's crazy, but he, of course he's pleading not guilty. His lawyers say he's as innocent as can be. He's denied bail. He's been denied bail twice now. Like it's everyone's, you know, once, once the feds are involved yeah. and this is federal, like you're going down. Well, I think no you, you like that. have to say you're innocent at that point. Like he's just so guilty that you're just like, it's so it's bad. the Scott Peterson vibe. It's like, so bad. But at one point, every freaking person in entertainment and in media and no, everything was associated with him. Yeah. The man is a mogul billionaire. One of the first, you know, billionaires, rappers that turned mogul. Mm -hmm. I mean, what he's accomplished and his success is one thing. And 
but he has had his hand in everybody. And I don't even know and can only imagine what, you know, Bieber, you know, I just feel like there was some real stuff going on there. I don't know, but it's bad, it's bad, it's bad. This man deceived everybody, and um, I, I just, I hope, you know, justice to serve. Well, that's and, what I feel like the only good thing that's come out of social media is, like, I hate the word, like, keyboard warriors, but we are allowing access for justices to come out. I think if this was, tier, I mean, it, look, if, if this was 10 years ago, it never would have come out. But Because it was going on, and, and, yeah, you're right. now are less scared of the, you know, like the Harvey Weinsteins. And at some point, it's all going to come crashing down. You know who I do feel bad about who? that came crashing down that I don't I knew feel deserves it? Is my girl, Ellen. And some would say she's my doppelganger at times when I have the wrong haircut. Yep. <laughs> yep. But uh, I watched her Netflix special. Have you watched it yet? No. It's so good. It is so good, y'all. It's so good. And, okay, she she talks about all of it. I mean, yeah. she addresses all of it. She's been canceled multiple times in her career. She was canceled when she was gay. She's now canceled again because of this. Like, she's been there. She's come back. She's fought. She's overcome. She ended every episode with be nice to one another. Mm -hmm. She's like, God damn it. I really should have said go fuck yourself at the end of every episode. Then they would have actually found out that I'm kind. Like, she just has these jokes about, yeah. like, you can't be mean in Hollywood. Nope. There's no mean CEO men in Hollywood. Like, I get, you, you get, you, you're mean, you get kicked out of Hollywood. Like, I can't be mean. Everyone in Hollywood, all these, like, terrible, like, ne network executives or CEOs that yeah. I work for that have just been cruel and, and taken down women and all this other stuff. Like, that's okay. But if I have a, you know, and she did so much good. Like, she did so much I know, good. but I think those kind of people will always go down hardest because people, she was like Mr. Rogers to people. Right. It, She's expected to be well, perfect. Exactly. So it's also not fair. It's like the Miss Rachels. You expect them. They're human. They're going to mess up. Yeah. But we don't want them to. And it, I think that's why people get so upset because we expect these CEOs to mess up. We expect, like, the the one percenter men to have their moments. We don't expect our Miss Rachels to. I know. It's like when they you see do, your teacher out in, in, in the wild. You're like, oh my God, that's my teacher. Why are they not in the classroom? I know. So if you see that person have a bad day, you're just like, it's extra disappointing. I know, but it, it, it's not fair. And um, I encourage everyone to watch, watch the stand up because you know, she's not only made us laugh for generations and helped. it just would be interesting. And maybe I don't know enough. Every single person in the world has had one person that thought of them as not nice or something. Of and course. So if a hostile she was, work environment is yes, what she was but so found it, guilty of. There's there's a way of addressing something to and someone like even myself included, I could be like. I didn't mean it that way, and I can completely understand how it came off that way 100%. to you. So I wonder if she maybe would have addressed it that way. I think maybe people wouldn't have done the pile on, pile on. I think sometimes just honesty, being like, wow, I cannot believe that I was taken that way. I apologize for that. I, I really did not mean it that way, or I was going through some point in my life. Because everybody goes through something in their life. Right. Nobody, she, I don't believe, unless you're Diddy's, that no one's innately mean or no one's innately bad. No, no. And when someone has done so much good and they're, you know, she was accused of a hostile work environment. She played pranks on everybody in that. She's like, I should not have had control. I should not have been, just because my name was on the show, I am in charge of everything. She's like, I shouldn't have been in charge of everything. Like, it wasn't my, she's like, I found out my, my co-guy, my producer hated snakes. So I would make sure snakes fell from his ceiling all the time. She's like, I'm a big kid. Like, I'm so sorry. Like, yeah. I shouldn't have been in charge. Whoever let that happen. Like, but she's like, we danced every day. I made everyone in there laugh all the time. Those were my family. Well, like, I took I care of them. Maybe... I paid for their kids. I paid for their families. I'm yeah. Like, no, I completely, I think maybe it was just too late. Like, I feel like she should have done this stand up like six months after the cancellation. I think she was so, everyone grieves differently. She said she went through a lot of therapy yeah. to even be able to get back on a stage and talk to people. I mean, it takes time 
to rebuild yourself, your self-esteem, your confidence. I know, but the sad part is, is what we've been talking about. Our world doesn't have time anymore. We move too fast. So I feel like by the time she did this, we were all like, Ellen who? I have forgiveness in my heart for Ellen. I am glad she's back. I hope you guys watch the stand-up. Tell me what you think. Um, I don't condone a hostile work environment by any means, um, but I do condone second chances, and um, I respect the hell out of how she um, has approached this, and um, I am I was happy that this came out. Do you know who set that I would love to be on? Set? Mm-hmm. Who's? Leanne Morgan's. Oh. She has a new series coming out, and I feel like that Yeah, we woman, talked about it. On I know. Would she just not have the best set in history and um, have that energy around her all the time would be my dream come true. 100%. And a couple of last little things. My girl, Caitlin Clark, the hate is going to hate. Hate yeah. is going to hate. She came into the NBA, and everyone was like, oh, Caitlin Clark, too much hype, blah, 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 blah. Rookie of the year, single season assist record, single season rookie scoring record, first rookie in WNBA history to record a triple-double, first rookie to record 100 threes in a single season. Boom. Best player ever was, best player in the league. Caitlin Clark does no wrong, continues to rise. Congrats. Congrats, Caitlin That's, Clark. Do you know that Lana Del Rey just married an alligator? God. Yes, I did see that. I actually. She was on a swamp tour in Louisiana. And fell in love with the alligator. Fell in love hunter. with the swamp guy. And they have this, you know. I think they dated like a hot second. Hot like, second. Everyone but I'm was kind very of concerned. obsessed. I love it. I actually hope they just keep rocking and rolling. I've seen the funniest memes all over. And I hope they get like a TV series that are on. What was our favorite show that we loved? Oh my God, with the guys on the boats, the ca- the alligators. Oh, Gator Boys. Gator Boys. I hope she, and what network was that on? Like the History Channel? I don't know. I but don't know. I hope Lana Del Rey gets a Gator Boys series. I, it's great. It's, Speaking I'm of just, boys, I'm by the way, um, Kristen Cavallari just finally broke up with her five-year-old boyfriend from Montana Boys. Okay, get this. The coolest couple in the history of, of couple, of fame, of culture, of sport, of music, of grunge, everything combined. Kurt Cobain's daughter, <gasps> Tony Hawk's son, married and just had a son. I know. Iconic. Just had a son. You know what his name is? He's Something already cool. an icon. Oh, I had it up on my phone. <laughs> it disappeared. No, I, yeah, talk about two iconic Oh, family. the fact that they are married and now that they've got a boy who's going to literally take over the world, he could just do nothing and he's still going to be so cool. Oh, boy, he's just like a teacher. I feel like that'd be so, so cool. So iconic. I love, remember that documentary we walked, watched about Tony Hawk? I love Tony Hawk. I know. Did you see the eight-year-old that drove herself to Target 25 minutes away from her house? No, but I could totally see Mick Nelson doing Eight that. years old. Little girl. Was caught one morning swerving through streets. People were video like, what the hell? Who's drunk at like 9 a.m.? She drove all the way to Target, shopped. Did a whole shopping spree, yeah, and sat back. down with all her toys and stuff, and then the police finally found her. That's got to be a big girl, like a, a tall girl to be able to fit, like, do her feet. I, I know. It, no, I mean, when you watch like, the meaning, video, like, you, big can, girl, you meaning, can tell like, she's not really reaching because she's, like, okay. yeah, all over the place. 25 minutes. still, though, minute. enough to be able to, like. I know. 25-minute drive. Wow. Eight years old to go shopping. Very dumb of the eight year old, but like kind of brilliant. Like, I, mean, I would be very interested to see what that eight year old does. And she said all she did when the police were questioning her was hit a mailbox. She's like, I did good. All I did was hit a mailbox. Oh, gosh. This is why we shouldn't be playing those video games. Very scary. Of course, no charges being pressed or anything like that. But like, it, and thank God nobody was hurt. And nobody That's was the most hurt, especially thing. the little girl. But no, she pulled up 25 minutes later to Target, went on a shopping spree, and sat down and was so proud of herself. And then the cops come in. She's like, hi. Okay, do you know who I feel like would do that? <laughs> who? Janie. Janie, oh my gosh, our niece Janie. She would 100% would. she's an icon. Um, I'm so obsessed last with her. Last thing, and then we're going to say goodbye. But, you know, when I was gone this last time, Sadie bought a Tony, which is this really cool toy that you can, like, put figurines on and it tells you stories. But what you can also do is send it custom stories of your own. So I was out of town for weeks and I was able to record 
nighttime stories for them. And I would upload it to the app and it would go straight to the Tony box, which is this little music box. They know how to do the whole thing. It's very user friendly. You press play and then it played them the story. And uh, Sadie said the kids played it over it and over and magic. over. It was magic. It was. And really, I thought Molly Morgan would play it over and over. And it was actually just Mick. I love it. Like Mick over and over and over and over and over. And he would just we'd have the TV going and he'd still be listening to you. So if you're leaving for any period of time. It was really special. Think about getting a Tony and sending them stories because it meant a lot to them. And it was exciting for me. Like, I was kind of sad when, like, they didn't like a story or, like, did they listen yet? Did they listen? Oh, yeah, and they were, like, they get mad. That's the funniest part. She's like, I don't like that story. I didn't want that story. And it makes you, because that's what would happen at home if you told a story. So it made me feel better that you were so much involved in their nighttime every day that they would tell you if they didn't like a story. It was great. It was great. So I highly suggest it. Um, Yeah, that was actually super... Thank you, myself. Um, so that's it. That's it, guys. Thanks for this being went by here. Been really, really, really fast today. We've got um, we got to glamour, glamour and grit. grit. Yeah, yeah, you go first. Um, my grit. I suffered from another severe migraine this week. Um, I used to get them as kids. They went away, and now I've started getting them like a couple times a year again, and I'm not sure why. Um, so I got to figure that out, and I got to figure out an actual medicine that works for migraines because Excedrin migraine does not work for me whatsoever. Um, so if you have any tips, please let me know. Mm -hmm. Um, the migraine was bad. Um, my glam, um, we, I mean, we got to celebrate Molly Morgan's birthday this week and we got her ears pierced. your beard is gone. And (laughs) that that could be yours. Oh yeah. yeah. But, uh, uh, yeah, that we've, we've been having so much birthday fun this entire week. It's been phenomenal. And I'm so happy to be back home. My grit is I got actually stung by a mosquito on my cheek. It's one a pimple. And it's been, like, gnarly. It, like, has not healed. Oh, dear. I know. So it's not a pimple, y'all. It's a bug bite. I just didn't, I never thought bugs could bite your face. They can bite anything. I know. I just, don't you kind of think that? My brother Joe got stung on the roof of his mouth by a hornet once. (gasps) That is just horrible. And my glamour is... One, yes. Yellow jacket, actually. Sorry. Your beard is gone. Like, he had this oh. gnarly, and he'd flip it, and then it would go under his lips. I'm so glad that is gone. But my also glamour is, yeah, being with the kids as a unit again. That's Thank you, guys. Happy Friday. Enjoy your weekend. Uh, pray for our people in space. And, um, and oh, wait, wait, and please pray for all of those who have been infected by the hurricane. And um, find since we're praying for people, just organizations and, sorry, I had to say that. Organizations and? Just find out organizations, or I know, like, Turtle Creek Lane, her husband's been going by helicopter. Find a local organization where you can lend a helping hand because that's incredibly important right now, and we're seeing so many people affected by that. Asheville, Tennessee, place that should have never, ever, ever felt a hurricane in its existence is taken down in it, it makes no geological sense. It's very sad. Um, we're praying for all the people But, like, over sorry, there. I didn't mean to, like, go— Oh, no, but on top of it, they can't get goods on the East Coast yeah. either. So, so East Coast needs some prayers. Yeah, we all—everybody needs some prayers. Love y'all. We'll see you on Monday see for Monday. a very, very exciting guest. Bye. Glamour. Grit. Glamour. Grit. Grit.